So I was going to stream today, but then I couldn't really find much to talk about apart from this one thing. So I'm guessing I'm just going to do a video about it and then, you know, just fuck it, do it straight to DVD and put it straight on YouTube, whatever. Let's fucking go. Okay, anyway, so the thing I wanted to talk about is that Chingford and Wood Green is a London constituency, traditionally incredibly safe conservative seat that has become more of a swing seat in recent years since uh, the 2017 first Corbyn election, 2019, when it was even closer, right? This is Ian Duncan Smith's seat, and I have not been um, <laughs> kind of shy about my criticisms of IDS on this channel. Um, he is the part of the architect of the reign of terror against the poor and disabled as, as his head of the Department of Work and Pensions um, throughout the kind of the Cameron government. He's the architect of that. Uh, and a lot of blood is on his hands. So I really want to see him lose his seat. Now, the candidate for 2017, 2019, um, and the one who almost, almost unseats him in 2019, is a woman called Faiza Shaheen. Now, she's a leftist. She's on the left wing of the party. She's a Corbyn supporter. Um, and I think she's a really good candidate. And she got really, really close. Unfortunately for her, though, she has committed the cardinal sin. And the cardinal sin is, publicly, is to publicly state the truth about Jeremy Corbyn, about Jeremy Corbyn's beliefs, uh, and what happened to Jeremy Corbyn uh, over the course of his you know, his tenure uh, as the leader of the Labour Party and the kind of, of the media campaign, vicious media campaign that was fought against him to try and undermine his authority and to undermine his tenure uh, as the leader of the Labour Party. So yeah, here's a, let's take a look at this. This is Ian Austin, someone who was originally um, a Labour member who then campaigned against Labour in 2019 and was made a Lord by the Conservative Party because he wanted to, again, well, another one of the people who just specifically wanted to undermine Jeremy Corbyn. Now, on my channel, I've gone into a lot of reasons as to why specifically he was undermined, partially because the media hegemony against him wanted to make sure that they didn't have their profits um, threatened at all. And second of all is that the MPs, even within the Labour Party, do not want him as leader of the party because if they are seen as being complicit in what he would have done as prime minister, suddenly their future lobbying careers, their future careers in the finance industry, that all goes down the pan. But anyway, this is a tweet that he made, um, which again, you can see from the tone here, he's not said that she's done anything wrong. He's not detailed what she said that's done wrong. In his mind, and in the mind of the right wing, in the mind of the media, and that they've tried to create this narrative, is that Corbyn is synonymous with being bad. And and um, and because of that, anyone who's left wing within the Labour Party or in general can then be tied to that being bad as well. So let's take a look at this clip that he's just posted of her saying that attacks on him were lies. Um, um, and the fact that, speaking about how that she's been selected to stand for Labour again, let's listen. What is safe to say is it didn't go down well with the electorate. It's the worst result. Would you change a lot about your manifesto? Look, from the conversations I was having on the doorstep, it was less about the manifesto, more about, I guess, the demonization of Jeremy Corbyn and how that had really sunk in with people. Um, I think it, it was less about specific policies so in the manifesto. Leader, the it was your leader, not the message. It was the way in which the leader has been portrayed, and that's a very different, right? That's and you can't, you can't, why, okay, how can so you make that noise? When time and time again, we've seen so many lies. I'm not saying Jeremy Corbyn's perfect, of course he's not, but, you know, we've had news nights where they've made him look like um, like a, a Russian. You know, we've ha had newspaper stories where he t they talk about him as a Czech spy. I mean, it's ridiculous. Sorry, can I just, so say, it, so like, can I just say at that point? And she's 100% correct in her analysis there. We have seen the coordinated smear campaign for an incredibly long time. The painting him as a Russian, talking about Corbyn's coat, the Chairman Mao style bicycle, all of that kind of random smear campaign, him being a Czech spy, him being in league with the Russians. New it is a kind of never ending uh, litany of Jeremy Corbyn derangement syndrome, sorry. So she, she's absolutely correct in her analysis here. Do you, and I'll let Jack Straw respond, but do you not think that the British people can make up their own minds? You, you're sort of talking about the media like it's got a vice onto people. They also. Yes, yes, it does, right? It is your duty. As, a as people who broadcast news to inform people properly, not to lie, not to smear, and not to misconstrue things. Because otherwise, you can do what you did with this and create an incredibly false narrative. And it's difficult to try and extricate the two from the opinion of Corbyn that's held by the populace and the actual truth of the things that he said and done. These are wide apart. It's incredibly far, incredibly far apart. And programs like Newsnight, programs you know, like all of these new kind of news programs, these current affairs programs, who continued with that narrative despite it being incorrect, are all to blame. This is where people get their information from. 
right? A lot of people don't have the time to go around and reading sources and looking into the history of things. So they have to use the summation that comes from the mainstream media to be able to form an opinion on these things. And if you completely misinform them, straight up lie, like literally just straight up lie, then where, you know, of course they're gonna be misinformed. So read manifestos, they look at leaflets, they see and read their own things out there. Why did you, you why, see, did, why did you sigh there, don't Jack you Straw? See, don't you see how the media and the fact that our press is so biased? When was the last time we had a prime minister that was chosen that wasn't supported by Rupert Murdoch, for instance? Right? Of course he was subject to attack, but I'm afraid it wasn't the media who made up the anti-Semitism over which, and even uh, Len McCluskey has, has said that uh, Jeremy Cusby did, did, did insufficient, uh, 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 Jeremy Corbyn did far too little about that and too late. He, that was Corbyn. It wasn't Cor the press who made up that Jeremy Corbyn had, got, had played footsie with terrorist organisations like Hamas. They, they can't even formulate a proper response. It's just playing footsie with Hamas rather than just, you know, understanding their needs to be able to, you know, counteract what's happening in Palestine, right? People say, oh, we said, from our, our friends Hamas. Well, how else are you going to get a peace process with these people? Go and say, oh, you cunt. Go and have peace. Stop firing rockets into Israel or else we'll fuck you. No, I mean, of course, you have to be able to be, um, you have to be you know, cordial with these people to to you know, guarantee that you can save people's lives, right? We've already seen from Boris Johnson what happens is if you speak out of tone or incorrectly in incredibly sensitive meetings like this, what happens with Nazanin, right? You can't just go out all guns blazing when you're in peace talks, for, for Christ's sake, right? And Hezbollah, I mean, and, and, to, and I have seen him do this, defend the provisional IRA when they were letting off bombs, killing innocent people in this country. I mean, we're not that cut the, we're, you're not rerunning their lines again. I mean, what we've got to talk about is what true. did work and what hasn't so worked do, and do, what we can Do you accept any of those as true? And he should not even demonstrate. He said he said good things about the IRA when they were bombing. What he probably said was is that the invasion and the occupation of what's happened in Ireland and what happened over the course of the years of the imperial past uh, of Britain uh, led to the material conditions necessary for things like that to happen. I'm sorry, that's just cause and effect. You can't you can't just ignore cause and effect when it comes cause and effect when it comes to these things, right? You know, of course, it's the same with 9-11, right? If, you, they hadn't, you, if America hadn't continued engaging in huge amounts of interventionism abroad, then these things would have been less likely to happen. And again, like, you can't, this doesn't absolve the IRA. It doesn't absolve you know, the people who did 9-11, right? But you have to understand how foreign policy from these nations leading up to this made that, court, made that end result inevitable. Truth. Past, you know, or this you think whole the media thing, like right now we have a Tory majority, we have a Tory majority, and this and again they didn't prove anything, right? Jack Straw said, "Oh well, he he was bad about anti-Semitism." No one's told. No, it's still to this day, no one will tell me an anti-Semitic thing that Jeremy Corbyn has said or done, right? Still to this day, right? They won't even. They won't even. They won't even say that. Maybe, right, you can make a case that anti-Semitism was handled poorly, right? The E.R. Chossy report tells us that it was, and they made plenty of prescriptions there. They didn't call, and what's interesting is in the E.R. Chossy report, they didn't call Corbyn an anti-Semite, and they didn't say that the Labour Party was institutionally anti-Semitic. In fact, they stayed completely clear away of both of those statements specifically, and were also, within their own judgment, said that it is incredibly um, you know, it's you know, people are well within their rights to state that they think that the problem of anti-Semitism within the Labour membership was overstated, uh, and that's what Jeremy Corbyn was suspended for the Labour Party for. This is all nonsense and half truths that they refuse to back up with any actual evidence. Here's another clip where you know, the same thing happens again, where it's just lies and smears, and they can re they refuse to actually pinpoint anything specific. Those uh, and they've condemned his visit to graves of terrorists linked with massacre. Yeah, so, I mean, there's this story here, but, I mean, his story is that he was there laying a reef with a bunch of whole other people that can also testify to this, um, to some people that were killed in an airstrike that, on that, a PLO that's not, building. That's not actually true. His this is account. a rehilted no, no, no. story Jake, from during Jake, the election. Jeremy Corbyn's, Corbyn's own article from the Morning Star in 2014 said that that was one of the wreaths they laid, and the other one was to uh, people, as he put, assassinated by Mossad in Paris, which refers to Black September terrorists. Now, that is not true. That is categorically not true. 
like there's only one of them that was assassinated by Mossad in Paris. There's only one that could theoretically be referring to, and that is Atef Cieso. Uh, and he wasn't killed by Mossad for being a Black September terrorist. All of the Black September terrorists who committed the Munich attack are buried in Libya because that's where they are. That's where they were buried or, or fled to, right? So all of the Black September terrorists who committed the Munich attack are literally all in a completely different country. It would be amazing if you managed to lay a wreath in Libya whilst being in Tunisia. You'd think that when you find that Sheen is entirely correct here by saying, well, no, the people in this cemetery were killed by an Israeli airstrike in the PLO building in Tunisia at the time, right? So this is just categorically untrue. This is just a complete fabrication on the part of whoever this other fucker is. You know, his own account of what happened. I think yeah. there's a lot to be said about the way in which Labour himself, has dealt he? with the anti-Semitism crisis, and I think certainly more can be done and should have been done. I think some of these stories kind of detract from that. So, you know, my point is, is that we need to get on with dealing with real anti-Semitism issues rather than focusing on stories that are hearsay, that you find yeah, contradictions it, it, within Israeli emerging that are terrorist isn't, isn't a And I think that's what we, you know, that's the focus should be on really mm. addressing issues of anti-Semitism. Ter 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 terrorists who hunt down and murder Jewish people for being Jewish people is an anti-Semitism issue. That would be relevant if any of the terrorists who actually shot and killed the people in the Munich attacks were in the cemetery, Haman Shot Cemetery, that Jeremy Corbyn laid a wreath for. They're not, because they're in Libya. This is an absolute lie. Like, the person he's referring to, which was murdered in Paris at FCA, so as I mentioned before, he was killed by Mossad, but because he was the Western link between people like the CIA and the PLO at the time. He was murdered by Mossad to try and temper any ability for there to be any kind of united front between Western powers and, and the Palestinian Liberation Organization. That's literally it. That is entirely the case. It's nothing to do with the Munich attack. This is a lie. This is a complete lie. I wish Pfizer knew kind of more about this stuff, so you could literally go up to this guy and say, well, if you're so sure that there's a Munich attack terrorist buried in Hammond shot ceremony, can you name them? Can you tell me who the name of this supposed Black September terrorist is who committed the Munich attack? Can you tell me who the name is? Oh, you don't know who that name is. Oh, so you're literally just parroting the same lines the right-wing press have been parroting for the entirety of the time that Jeremy Corbyn's been the leader of the Labour Party. Hmm, I wonder. That, that, that is, that, that's not hearsay, that's, that's a fact. Though. No, it's not a fact. I mean, that's the point. Well, the, we the, hear the, all the kinds about the... Corbyn, don't we? About him being a Czech spy and the rest no, of it. I'm, I mean, I'm, let's concentrate on I'm what, sorry, what I'm we sorry. know the to widow, be true. The widow of a champion Israeli weightlifter, castrated and shot dead by the Munich terrorists, said, to go to the grave of a person behind the killing of 11 athletes, he should be ashamed yeah. and apologise. Well, there isn't actually... There is that. There is nobody who was behind the... The terrorist attacks in Munich, who is buried in that cemetery, right? And this is an appeal to emotion by saying, oh, look at this, look at this grieving widow who said this bad thing about Jeremy Corbyn about a fact that is categorically untrue. It is not true in any sense of the word, right? And this guy is using his emotional manipulation tactic to be able to attack his political opponents. Actually, evidence to say person, that he went. So he, he wrote the article we, that said he went. I haven't got it in words. front of me, so I can't say which of you is right, but thank you both very much. Very spirited debate tonight. Do you see what I mean? None of it's true. It's all smears. It's all lies. It's all been fabricated. And you can't even challenge it without people jumping down your neck and accusing you of being a Jew hater. This is utter, this, is, this is absolutely deranged. And the reason why they do this, and the reason why this kind of whole campaign started to begin with, right? All of these lies and all of these smears, all of these half-truths that have been parroted by the mainstream media for an incredibly long time, right? Ever since 2017. The reason why they've done this is because they want to be able to extricate everybody who is left-wing out of UK politics. They want to smear everybody who is left-wing, whoever is even a tangential relationship with Jeremy Corbyn. They want to take them out of the political process. You saw it with Rebecca Long-Bailey having to get you know, taken out of the front bench for retweeting an article that mentioned something about an Israeli police technique in it. Because that theoretically might be anti-Semitism. Again, let me be abundantly clear, right? Criticism of the state of Israel is not anti-Semitism. If you think that it is, then that is an anti-Semitic belief because you suddenly think that Israel as a country, as a state, represent the entirety of the international Jewish community. When it does not, it absolutely does not. It is a country, it is a state that answers only to its own citizens and to the democratic process within there. Despite the fact that you know, there's such split along so many different party lines, there's barely any majority for even what's going on with regards to these attacks that happen. Uh, you know, the uh, the, essentially the open 
in their prison camp that they have in Palestine. That is a matter for the Israeli state and the people who govern that state. It does not have anything to do with the overall wider Jewish community. So trying to say that criticism of Israel is inherently anti-Semitic, is if that is just that all that does is if it furthers, it furthers a you know, an ethnic and religious divide between Jews and Muslims over the Israel-Palestine issue by trying to make it about their ethnicity and race on and religion and not about what it is, which is one state occupying another illegally by international law. And you are you're cheapening that. You're, you're cheapening anti-Semitism. You're cheapening the terror and the scourge of anti-Semitism in the society by using it as a cheap cudgel to attack your political opponents, right? And they want they they don't see the left as legitimate political actors. So they want to use these continuing smears to make sure that people like Faisal Shaheen cannot run. And if they do run, they can get completely bodied and destroyed. And that's why people, when you look at Ian Leslie, the tweet that I was look I had up previously, but I've I missed that now anyway. Literally saying, oh, well, this shows how far Keir Starmer has to go um, to you know, see to be able to remake the party. Uh, and they shouldn't really be having people who support Jeremy Corbyn, uh, you know, as, as as standing MPs. What in the Socialist Party, in the supposedly democratic democratic Socialist Labour Party, we're not allowed to have any left wing people in case they look too anti semitism -y. This is the this is a political project. This is a media political project from you know, Murdoch, from the Barclay Brothers, from Viscount Rothermere, and beyond. Right, all of these people who you do th who are threatened by any amount of left wing policy that might affect their overall bottom line. Right. It's a political project to make sure the left have no political voice in this country. And you've seen it, and it's worked here. They try it in other countries. They tried it on Bernie fucking Sanders, a Jewish man himself, because they saw how it might work by linking this criticism of Israel with anti-Semitism. It's nonsense. It's absolute nonsense. And um, and the population has fallen hook, line, and sinker for it. And it's incredibly dangerous, not just for the political discussion in this country, but for the actual fight against racism in this country, against anti-Semitism, right? The history of anti-Semitism is long and storied, and there you believe you me, right? I'm not saying there is no anti-Semitism in the Labour Party, because that's true. There 100 percent is. There is you know, these cases were documented inc incredibly well documented actually in the EHRC report, and you've and we've all seen that right now. But just but this this trying to attempt to intrinsically link left-wing politics with anti-Semitism, it's it is it's 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 completely uh it's repugnant. It's rancid that these people will use something uh, as serious anti-Semitism as a cheap political cudgel to beat their opponents. I, I'm sorry, but it, it just is. Uh, and all of the best of Pfizer Shaheen, all of the best, I really do hope that she beats Ian Duncan Smith, gets him out of Parliament. The, the best thing I could possibly have, personally, would to see him lose his seat. But, you know, what's going to happen now? Any left-wing MP who tries to stand, who even attempts to defend Jeremy Corbyn, in that local seat, they're just going to use this attack client. It's going to and it's going to work. It's going to work. The amount of people who just call Jeremy Corbyn a terrorist sympathizer or anti semite just off the cuff say this man is a, 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 a disgusting racist when there's no evidence for it. The man who's fought his entire life against racism. And it's it is expe it, it's explicitly it's explicitly disgusting when they are using it to deliberately target a Muslim woman of color as well. Right? It's so, and especially our, and now that we have the Ford report, we know that people were trying to explicitly use um, any kind of thing that they could to leak to the press to try and paint Jeremy Corbyn as anti-Semitic of the right-wing faction of the Labour Party, right? We know that there is institutional sexism and, and Islamophobia within the party, or well, maybe not institutional, but there is definitely a two, there's a problem with it that needs sorting, just like there was a problem with anti-Semitism that needed sorting as well. And that they've put that on the back burner specifically because they've had to try and appease the media narrative around anti-Semitism as well. And we know, we've seen the stats, we know that the, on average, Labour members are less anti-Semitic than the Conservative members, but I digress. Either way, this is incredibly dangerous. It cheapens the fight against anti-Semitism, it destroys the political process, and it is being shamelessly used to try and make sure that the left have no political voice in this country. So uh, best uh, best of luck to Pfizer. I really do hope she wins her seat. But I honestly, I I think that we might not be we might be out of luck um, moving forward. And I don't know, I don't know how to how we can how we can get around this. But if you did enjoy my content, my uh, off the cuff rant, please consider liking and subscribing. If you click the bell, it'll notify you when I to, when I go live. Uh, and if you go into the description of this of this video as well, there'll be my Twitch link, which is where I also go live 
on there. Two plus all of my socials as well. Thank you very much, guys. I'll take care and I'll see you on the next one.